Hello? Can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to my talk today. And I hope that you've been enjoying Big Data London as much as I have. Um, it's been amazing to be asked to speak here today. My name is Javita Tam. I currently lead a client experience program for the Chief Privacy and Regulatory Office at Kindro. So Kindro is a 90K strong multinational um, IT infrastructure services company, which spun out of IBM late last year. My current responsibilities include building a customer experience program, as well as managing a series of transformations. So I'm personally very passionate about innovation, growth, and sharing. And it has always amazed me how much technology and data have changed the way we live and will continue to change the way we live. So in our upcoming 25 minutes, I'm hoping to take you on a journey to explore how as data leaders, I believe we're in a unique position to build a customer-centric organization. I hope that at the end of this talk, you would go out and seek a customer experience leader in your organization or in your customer's organization and build a strong partnership with them. And I hope that you will share your data skills and experience with the professional and build better companies. So let's get started. So let's start with one of my most favorite quotes and it's by Albert Einstein. And it says that we cannot solve problems with the same thinking we use when we created them. I've spent a good amount of time in my career as a consultant. I've worked for some very small companies, and I've also had the privilege of calling some of the largest financial institutions my client. And this is something that I've learned. Frequently, it really isn't about throwing out our existing thinking. It really is about periodically going in and re-examining some of the assumptions that we have and perhaps taking a look at the perspective and the various lenses that we're using to examine our problem so that we can come up with a solution or design an innovation which is fit for purpose right now. So what are some of the working principles that we're going to be using for our journey today? First, I think that context really matters. I think that opportunities and innovations and problems and solutions really don't exist in a vacuum. And this is why we sometimes have project fires and program fires, but we'll get to that later. Next, I think innovation really happens when we combine the strength of humans with the strength of data and technology. I feel like as humans alone, we can't get it done. And by just purchasing or having newer technologies or data, we're also not going to get innovation. So we really need to put the two of them together. Next, purpose, purpose, purpose. I think it's important for us to focus on in our intention. What is our reason for being? And that must drive the strategy that we develop, not the other way around. Next. I truly believe that everyone has a customer. You could be a person who's in the inside of the company. Maybe you don't have a client facing role as we call it. We don't touch you know, people outside of the organization. Or we could be in a client facing role working with people from other companies all the time. But it doesn't matter. We all have the customers that we need to serve. And there have been numerous studies done which have stated that co companies which are client-centric have outperformed companies that are not. And ultimately, we are here to drive business outcome and to deliver a business impact. Right. Lastly, our last working principle here today is that as important as it is for data and technology to deliver what it can deliver to us, it is not a substitution for human qualities such as kindness, compassion, and judgment. So here we are at the data strategy theater and we're talking about alignment of strategies. So let's start at the very beginning. What do I mean by strategy? So to me, strategy is fundamentally about making choices and it is about doing things differently and finding different ways to compete. 
for me as well, strategy is about what we are going to do as well as what we're not going to do. It is only when we can be clear about both, I believe, that we have a true and genuine strategy. And we also employ that strategy, which is guided by our purpose, to help us make decisions and trade-offs, which is essentially the real life that we live every single day. Now, sticking true to my own words, I'm also going to go over with you what I believe strategy is not. Strategy is not a goal and it's not an aspiration. Those things are very important. So for example, saying that, hey, we would like to grow 35% in this coming 12 months. That's very useful, but it in itself is not a strategy. It's a goal or an aspiration. It doesn't really tell us comprehensively how we're gonna compete differently. Next, technology in itself is not a strategy. By saying that, hey, we have employed this technology or we've bought this vendor platform, that in itself is not a complete strategy and is certainly not the data strategy. Lastly, I think that we must distinguish between strategy, making choices, as well as operational effectiveness. Operational effectiveness is about making choices in that we are going to be better. So let's continue with our best practices, let's do this better. But it's not about doing things differently. So while it's crucial to the success of our business, we must not confuse strategy with operational effectiveness. Now, why do we need strategy? Ultimately, as I mentioned, we are in this real world. We're all dealing with resource constraint problems or constraint optimization problems. We may have limited manpower, we may have limited budget, headcount, skills, and so on. And that is all of the more reason for us to prioritize. Second, I think this is a point that we often forget, is that there's no one way to compete. And this is why it's important for us to distinguish between operational effectiveness and strategy, because best practices are essential and they're great but it won't help us compete differently. And there, going back to Einstein's quote, it would be the same thinking. Let's change up our thinking so that we can get different results and the results that we want. And lastly, as mentioned before, data offers, sorry, strategy offers us a guidance on how to make choices and make the trade-offs that we need to make every day. Because when we align strategy and align our tactics to achieve this business outcome that we desire, every single day, we are making countless decisions. Let our purpose, let our strategy guide us through that. So I don't know if this picture resonates with anybody in the audience, but this is how I feel like sometimes as a data leader, is that every single day we're jumping through hoops which are on fire. And as mentioned before, well, context matters, and this is why we're not functioning in a vacuum, that's why we have fire. And I think that, you know, by looking at this, I want to remind you that ultimately, as important as it is for us to build our data capabilities and for us to serve our clients, we need to keep an eye on the fact that we're trying to aim, we're aiming to hit a specific business outcome. So here in the data strategy theater, we're talking about oh, aligning data strategy with the business strategy. And here I'm asking you, hey, maybe the way to do this is to throw in the customer experience management piece to it because that's what gives us direction when aligning the two. Now, my experience in the industry shows me that it's very, our clients are very important to us because they are the people who we're trying to serve and they're the people to whom we have a relationship and an obligation to. But I want to draw your attention to the second half part of this quote. And it says, and we consider them to be loyal to us right up until the second that someone else offers them a better service. Let's pause for a minute and to think about this. Why is it important for us to be customer centric and to put the customer in the middle of it? It is because customer experience and the expectation of your customers continues to evolve. 
I know a lot of us are used to running transformation projects, transformation programs, which may be, you know, six months, a year, three years. But if we truly put customers in the center of what we do, whether it is offering a service or building a product, then we'll know that, hey, it really is about evolution. It is about growth. It is not just about transformation. And that helps us think differently. So here, I want to ask you to go back to a recent experience that you've had. So think about a time where you were somebody's customer and everything felt great. You know, you were in cloud nine, everything just worked absolutely perfectly. Just take a second, think about how you felt about that, what that experience was, and take a snapshot of it in your head right now. Are we good? Okay. So now I'm gonna ask you to cut to an experience where you're somebody's customer, but the employee of the company that you're interacting with is now sitting across from you or on the phone or whatever it is that they're doing, and they're explaining to you the internal process of that company. It could be that our internal process is X, Y, Z. This is handled by another business function. Blah, 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 and it continues. It doesn't feel so great, does it? Now take a snapshot of that. Now, if you look at it on the left, you see that one of them having the customer in the center, allowing the customer experience to drive how you organize your organization and everything that you do, we call that an outside in approach. And in essence, that's what about being customer centric is all about. Just like as data leaders, data will flow through the entire organization regardless of how the company is structured. With customer experience, it again is something that touches every part of the organization. And to your right hand side, you have a meeting room. And I'm sure as data leaders here, we've all been in meetings with so many stakeholders. And those are certainly interesting meetings. But what I want you to remember is that the most important stakeholder is often not the person, the person that's not there, and that's your customer. And I think this is the reason why, as data professionals and data leaders, it's important for us to go find that customer experience leader in your organization to form that partnership, because the, the two groups of people are really trying to do the same thing which is to speak for the customer when they're not in the room. Now, you're gonna see a lot of definitions and acronyms and everything else on there. And at the bottom, I have the most recent updated and expanded definition of what customer experience management is by Garner. I'm not gonna go over each of them with you. And if you go Google this, you're gonna get all sorts of definitions and try to Google some of those terms and the word Venn diagram together. And what you're gonna see is all sorts of different definitions and relationships and so on and so forth. Now, remember we took those two snapshots that we had in our head. I want you to go back to that experience. The one that you were, it was fr slightly frustrating because you were being told we can't do this for you because this is the way our firm is organized. So clearly, when we are the customer, we don't care about any of these acronyms. We don't care about the definition of it, where one ends and where the other one begins. So what I'm urging you when we look at, okay, what do we mean by customer centric and customer experience? Please go adopt the widest definition that you can think of that's relevant to that situation because ultimately your customers will be doing the same. Now we get into, and this is something that I've been hinting at, right? Why do data and CX leaders need to be great partners? To me, great customer experience is very much like magic, just like advanced technology. But as all of the vendors and everybody in this room, right, is telling us, it really isn't magic. It really is a lot of hard work and a lot of innovation. And great customer experience is supported by everything that you see, you know, at the bottom there. And as customer experience leaders, we have a tool or a technique that we use called customer journey mapping. 
So what we do is we go around and we, let's say, take a customer profile, right, or persona, and we follow that customer through, right, every touch point from pre-sale to following up. We go, what is the interaction that this customer have with our firm? And we map it all out. And you can look at each of those as the tip of the iceberg, right? Which needs to be supported by great data maturity, among many other things. And if we go back to the quote that we've looked at earlier about how the demand for customer experience is constantly evolving, and when we start looking at things differently, we're going to come up with different ideas. Perhaps what we really need to do is to have business-led decoupled architecture. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it. There needs to be the client experience layer at the top, you know, your front end, which is very agile, that it can evolve with the customer experience and changes in demand. We could have our layer, which is our data, and we could have a layer, which is a technology. Now, all of a sudden, you're now looking at things a little bit differently because you're putting the customer in the center of everything. Maybe traditionally the things that you thought were, no, this and this has to go together. Yes, we, maybe we have been coupling those things together, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to go together. Start looking at it from the customer's perspective. What do they expect? What can I do right now? As a data leader and a data professional, what is the thing that I can offer the CX leader in my organization right now, or the CX leaders in my customer's organization right now, where are the pain points? So again, as customer experience and data maturity evolves in an organization, we're gonna have better business outcomes and we're going to be able to build better companies which are customer centric. So going to that, I think that for us is about building a purpose driven organization. It all starts with the purpose and that determines the business strategy that we have. As data professionals, we are here to align our data strategy to that business strategy. But we can also say, hey, we understand how important it is the customer experience is to the firm. And we can do a lot to support that. And this is how, as I think data leaders, it's easier for us to show tangible outcomes when we can tie our work to customer retention, customer loyalty, sales, and great customer experience. These are very measurable outcomes that companies are very willing to invest in. And maybe it's time to switch up the dialogue a little bit. Next, as we have seen, CX leaders and data leaders face similar challenges. It, both CX leaders and data leaders are working with organizations where it may be organized in a siloed kind of a way, but the expectations of customers and data certainly will not make that distinction. So we're fighting the same battle. It is good to have change leaders band together within an organization to make real change. And lastly, and this is something that we've talked about on multiple occasions, is the idea of if you put the customer in the center of everything, you will start thinking about innovation because innovation is really about people plus technology and data. And that is something, it, it is a journey that we go on. There's no end point, there's no like, we got there, we're golden. And it encourages us to think about things differently. And this is not about jargon, it really is just about a good customer experience and it is about growth. So as we are nearing the end of our journey today, um, here are some of the ideas that we have covered today. Now, if you forget absolutely everything that I've talked about today, I want you to walk away with three things. First, purpose, purpose, purpose. Always be clear about what your purpose is and what your intentions are and allow that to drive your strategy. Because if you can't do that, it's going to be very difficult to find direction. Next, 
Strategy is about making choices, and it is about competing differently. We must be very clear about what we are going to do and what we're not going to do. And any of the other things that we talked about, right? Technology, operational effectiveness, or goals and aspirations, those are not substitution for strategy. And lastly, please focus on the people. Because as great as technology and data is, it's not a substitution for human qualities such as kindness, compassion, and judgment. So here, I ask you at the end of this talk to please go out there to seek that CX leader within your organization or your customer's organization. If you find that that person don't exist, hey, why don't we become that person to help our organization become more client-centric and data-centric? And lastly, please have fun and be creative. Thank you very much for listening to me today. And here's my LinkedIn QR code. I would love to continue this conversation with you offline. Thank you.